Hello everyone and welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> welcome to the first episode of Seasoned with Love. I want to tell you that it began some time ago when I was taking care of my mother and um, she had um, she had a stroke and she recovered very well. She did very well, but I was there to take care of her along with my sister, my father, and my um, siblings, and uh, Miss Rosetta and Miss Trudy. Um, but my whole life, and including that time when I was taking care of my mom, my mom, I learned how to cook for my mother, and I love to cook. It's like a a chemist. You just come up with great things and just to make something wonderful. And I'm a passionate cook, which means that I season, cook, select by feeling. Um, I usually don't measure anything. I can, but it's a little different. Um, but um, I usually just try to have a feeling for a person or I love to entertain. And so when people come over, I love to actually cook for them. And when I was taking care of my mother, we um, began a catering service, kind of sort of, it like informal. I would always take her, my father made sure that she got her hair and her nails and her feet and everything done every week. And he took her out on dates every week <laughs> after she had her stroke. And I will tell you that really works. Be, be tuned, stay tuned for the book that's coming out called Riding the Rainbow. Anyways, um... I used to bring my mother's lunch with her, with us, when we went to the hairdresser or whatever the case may be. People used to love to eat off of her plate and they would say, oh my gosh, could you make something for me? I'll pay you. And then we discovered like the nail technicians never got out for a good lunch. They always had to order in. Hairstylists that were doing a hair never got out for a good lunch. Um, um, people that their parents or grandparents were diabetic or whatever the case may be. And so it turned out that Mommy and I said, I said, Mommy, why don't we start a business? And then we could just deliver food to everyone and have an awesome time. And um, let me, hold on. And, yeah. And so we started, and so when other people were saying that they would pay for it, they love my cooking, they love my mother's cooking and that sort of thing because she taught me how to cook. We said, why don't we just start doing it for people and bring it in and and um, giving them wonderful food, soul food, not food that will raise your blood pressure, your blood sugar level, your weight or anything along, along those lines, but something that will really make you feel good inside. That's what I call soul food because I've been cooking for people for years and no one's ever said that they gain weight because of what I've cooked, even though I put some great stuff in there at times. My mother's blood sugar never shot up. I cooked for her full time for four years, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I, my mother is a real cook, so you can't skimp on certain seasonings or even butter. And none of it affected her. It was just really great. We kept active and worked out and things like that. That does help. But anyway, so I said, well, let's do this. Um, and you know what? Whether I'm giving you a hug, whether I'm fixing a plate for you, it's all seasoned with love. And that's why, that's what we called it, Season with Love. So this is the first episode on April 28th, 2021, on my mother's birthday. How about that? And that's just happening. I have some really, really wonderful, enjoyable, I think a wonderful, enjoyable meal that I'm going to fix for you. It only takes about 15 minutes or so, actually. So it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty quick and pretty good. And as always, anytime you cook something really, really good and you season it with love, you have to have guests over to share it. And I'm making this special meal for a special guest. You're going to meet her shortly. Her name is Filsha Bowden. And I cannot wait till you meet her. So let's get started. Okay, so what am I making for you today? Well, the first thing I want to do is my my water is boiling already on my pot, so I'm going to pull this up. I really love to use um, fire, real fire. Um, I used I love to camp, so I'm going to use real firewood and that sort of thing. But other than that, on the stove, I like to use a gas stove. But I'm not at my home, so I'm going to use what they have. Let's start this. Uh, let's start that. All right, and what I like to do is add a little bit of salt and 
a little bit of olive oil. Anytime I cook pasta, I like to add a little bit of olive oil. And this has already started boiling. So what I have here is I have some ricotta cheese and mozzarella ravioli. Now, I usually make my own pasta, my garlic butter pasta, which is what I'm making today. And, but I'm gonna use this because I'm, this is what they had available. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in there. And then I'm gonna set it up again in the back for a boil. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover it. So that's the first thing. So this is all impromptu, it was all good because mommy was like that. She was down to earth. We didn't really like sweat the small stuff. You know what I'm saying? So. Anyway, so now for my next, what I'm doing next, let's see, can I put this, oh, here's a good, I can put that here. I'm going to make, put a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of olive oil in my pan because I have a number of things that are going to go into this pan. And the first thing I'm going to do is I like to saute a lot of different things. I like to saute, I'm going to have, let's see, I'm going to have, this is ginger and, a hun and onion. Ginger and onion. Ginger and onion. Ginger and onion. I'm gonna have ginger and onion. I'm gonna saute that at the very beginning to get ready for my broccolini and then my shrimp. Isn't that fabulous? So I'm gonna have that, let that boil again. Let's see, this gets pretty hot pretty quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. And so I don't mess up the pans. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the little oh, brush here. Okay, now we got that going on there. And now that my onions and my ginger are sauteing in some olive oil and butter, I use the marigold butter. Sometimes I like Land of Lakes. Um, and now I'm about to put in some wonderful celery. I like celery because I try to stay on the healthy side. And plus, I like always like a little crunch to my food. But some people don't. Some people don't like a lot of crunch, and so I just cook it down. I really want the flavor, if anything. So I have my celery, my onions, my ginger. Now I'm going to add some a uh, one Roma tomato. I, I want to be careful of the acid, right? So I'm going to put some tomato in there. And it smells wonderful. What I like to do, if I'm not stewing something for a very, very long time, what I like to do is I like to add my seasoning a little later. Okay, so we're going to put that here. And my ravioli is looking good. You don't want to overcook it. You want it al dente, but if you want to overcook it a little bit, you know, just cook it for a, another minute or so. It'd be just fine. So, what is all this about? I have this pan going on with all of my seasoning now. All this butter and all this olive oil is coming up, and so I'm going to have shrimp with it. I'm going to make some shrimp and some broccolini, which is smaller than the broccoli. And I'm going to add just a little bit of white wine, just to get it going. Okay, actually, I'm gonna have it on high and I'm gonna cook it down, get it rid of all that. Well, I want the wine in there, but we're getting rid of all the other stuff. Okay, and then I'm gonna have that going on. And then right when it starts boiling, I'm gonna add in my broccolini. Now, as you can see, I haven't added in any more water. I have water here, I always have water here. Just a little bit to add, whether I'm making homemade gravy or whatever the case may be. But I don't, um, I try not to water everything down. I want to keep the flavor a little bit. And um, when well, my friend Phil shows helping me shoot this actually, when she, when she came over, when she was coming over, um, she watches what she eats as well. But she loves good taste, good food. So I thought, hmm, what can I cook for her? She's a pescatarian. And so I thought, oh, well, what can I cook for her? That really fits her spirit and her, her liveliness and all of that. So that's how I came up with this meal for her and for you. I'm cooking it for you. I look forward to cooking for you one day. So now that this is boiling, I'm gonna go ahead and put my broccolini in. I don't like my broccoli to be too mushy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in, get that going. And I'm gonna add, you know, you don't wanna overdo it. You wanna have just enough for your pot. So I'm gonna, 
probably keep it at this point when I have that. I know that my pasta is already done because the pasta that I actually bought um, only takes about three minutes to cook. Four minutes if you want it a little softer. So here's my broccolini. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. And as you put in more, you just wanna make sure that you have everything seasoned. And believe it or not, we're almost done. <laughs> we're almost done, actually. Really, this, this meal, this whole meal, uh, takes about 15 minutes. So, I'm gonna put this here. Now, I have my butter left, I have my lemon. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon to it. I've already used my olive oil, so I don't need that anymore. Now I'm gonna start seasoning. I love garlic. Fresh garlic or garlic powder. I try to try to stay away from the salt, but I'll put some garlic powder in there because I love garlic. It brings out all the types of flavorings. I love that. Because I'm gonna have shrimp, I'm gonna add in a little bit of lemon pepper. That is a little bit of lemon pepper, just a hint. And really when I have music going on and usually I'll have a little bit of wine or something to drink it, um, I like to just kind of feel good, listen to music, and that sort of thing. Can't do that while we're videotaping. Um, and so, um, so I sprinkle the seasoning and all of that by how I feel. And really it's like being in sync and being with one and because it is a passion and you're doing a potion, I know just how much to add, just how much to take away. How to, and I listen, I can even like fry chicken from the sound. I could be in another room and I can hear the chicken um, frying. And because of that, I know when to take it out, when to turn it over, if it's pork chops or anything along those lines. All right. Okay. So, I already have sauteed onions, but you can never have enough onion powder. A little bit of onion in there. Just a little bit. Then I'm going to add my pepper. Love pepper that brings everything out. And then finally, you can watch your salt. I very seldom use salt, so when I cook and I'm cooking with some else, I definitely use a little bit of salt, especially in your pasta. You know, it can be a little blah sometimes. But instead of that, you can add like spices. You can add like red pepper. Wasn't sure whether fish should like red pepper, but red pepper is good, that sort of thing. I'm gonna add just, I dance over it a little bit. And then I just add just a little bit, and then you can add your, I like for people to add their own salt, any more salt um, on their own. So then you know you never over salt anything. So here we go. We have the broccolini looking good. We're gonna keep that going at a high temperature. You wanna have it going at a high temperature. Keep all that cooking as it's going. I have my shrimp in last because you don't wanna overcook shrimp. So that's the last thing that I do. So now, have I ever made this before? I have not. I don't follow recipes. I do whatever makes me feel good, whatever I think about, whatever I wake up with. And like I said, this is something that I had. I had aroma tomato left over. I had onions left over. I had that in anybody's kitchen. I can go in and actually make a meal for them. So my broccolini is looking good. I love the color of it. While that is cooking down a little bit, I'm now gonna take the top from that. Put it over here. Here's my ravioli. I'm going to drain it, but I still want it to be hot. So I'm not going to rinse it off necessarily. Now I have just a little bit of, you know what? I could probably add in the rest of that broccolini because let's see here. Let's add in just the rest of that broccolini. Okay. Looking good. Put that there. Now, while this is hot, I'm going to shake it a little bit. And I'm going to put it right back into the same pan. And I don't mind, um, I don't mind um, working. I don't mind working for a meal or anything. So this is when I really start to go to work, even when I'm making my gravy. Anything along those lines. So I'm making garlic butter pasta. So I have my ricotta and mozzarella there. I'm gonna take a little bit, I'm putting my butter in here while it's still warm. I'm putting butter in. And if you've ever made homemade pasta, 
you know how wonderful it is. So I'm putting my pasta in and I'm putting my butter in. I'm putting my pepper. I'm getting my garlic powder because it is garlic butter pasta. And guess what I'm going to add last? Something, a special treat that I have. Heavy cream, boom. <laughs> Now you, now you know why I run three miles a day. <laughs> I'm gonna put some cream in here. Now I'm gonna turn it on just, I'm gonna turn some heat up to it just a little bit because it has milk and all of that in there. You, want to, you don't wanna to do too much, but I want it a little creamy. Let's warm that up. This is some heavy cream that I love. And I'm one of those cooks that once you you start cooking, that's good, and you taste, start tasting, you don't really want the meal afterwards, but I am going to sit down with Fisher and eat with her today. So I have all of this going, looking good, looking good, and I know, you're going to hate me, but I'm going to do it. I'm adding in cheese, more cheese. Who can have more cheese? I love cheese. We have to put some cheese in here. Whoa! Yeah. And while we're doing that, ah, uh, that's boiling. I'm putting in my shrimp. <laughs> Look at that. So here's my cheese, and I got that on low a little bit. This cheese. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is. And when you have like um, cheese which has its own salt and sodium to it, and you have cream and all, oh, this is perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down. But you know, and sometimes I go by looks. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at, I'm like, wow, let me add a little bit more pepper. Cause I don't want it to be overwhelmingly cheesy. And I'm gonna have this here. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. If you, Oh, can you see that? Mm. Look at that. Oh, look how wonderful that looks. Look how wonderful that looks. Now that I have my shrimp in, as soon as that changes colors, I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. Oh, look at that. Look how beautiful that looks. Look how beautiful. And because I have the shrimp and I like a little bit of zest to it, this is what I'm gonna add in a little bit of lemon. Lean a bit of lemon. Perfect. Oh, I really think this is gonna be wonderful. Now, why am I excited and why do I know this is gonna be so good? Because I feel good inside. I feel good inside making this and I could just tell, I could feel the vibration, I could feel almost like I could taste it, right? Well, I hope it's really good, we'll see. And so, I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. And as soon as it turns a little pink with the shrimp, guess what? After it turns a little bit of pink, we're done. We're done, it's time to eat. <laughs> I love it. So here we go. Now, if I wanted to cook it faster, I could just cover it. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I don't want my broccoli to get too done. And so what you can also do is turn it down just a tad because it really doesn't need to be overcooked. So I have that. And with the broccolini, it really does, it really does taste like broccoli. So you have to be careful of not overpowering anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of the, mmm, mmm, I feel them. I taste the lemon, and I taste the lemon pepper, which is good because my cheese pasta is going to sweeten it up a little bit. Okay, so let's do this. Now I could probably add a little bit more pepper in here, but what I'm going to do? Mm-hmm. Now, I want them to match. I want them to blend, so I'm gonna add a little bit more butter, actually, to this. 
I don't want it so acidy. I don't want it to taste too lemony. Some people love it, but I'm gonna get rid of some of the lemon um, flavor. Oh, isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? So let's get some of that butter in there. And actually, as you can see, my shrimp has already turned colors. You never want to overcook the shrimp. That looks real good. I got these deveined. I got these deveined and peeled already because I didn't want to waste a whole lot of time doing that myself, which I can do. Um, but I decided not to do that this time. And then let me taste it one more time because I like my broccoli a little crunchy. Mmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna add a dash of salt. And sometimes what I do to make sure I don't have to overdo it, I put it in my palm. And then I pinch it. Just like that. And then I stir it. Oops. And if your kitchen isn't a mess when you're cooking, I'm just not sure whether it's good. <laughs> you want your kitchen to be a little bit of a mess. <laughs> at least, at least I do. But I clean as I go. So, all right. Let's see how we're doing here. Mm-hmm. All right. And you know what? We're done. That's what it is. It's gonna simmer down a little bit. I've already turned it off. And now I'm going to welcome my guest who's going to join me for dinner and going to join us for conversation as we have a little bit of conversation and togetherness seasoned with love. I'll see you in a moment. I would like to welcome um, Filcha yeah. to Seasoned with Love. All right. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> what a pleasure to be here with such a beautiful being to be able to cook such a wonderful meal for me. Look, I cleaned the house. I didn't eat any breakfast this morning because I was like, I'm going to work up appetite for this one. <laughs> all the juice. <laughs> yes. All right. Here we go. Oh my. Except pasta and shrimp. Now, you have the Old Bay if you want a little bit of seasoning to it. It doesn't even need it. Oh mm. my god. Mm. 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 I like it with pasta. Mm. Mm. I can taste a little bit of the white wine. And so I look forward to when you come to my restaurant, wherever I am, mm -hmm. 
you allow me to cook for you and season it with love so that you can enjoy it. <laughs> this is a treat. This is a treat. Oh, man. Thank you, guys. It's oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Mm. Mm. I want to thank you, Janice, for coming out here and to help me wake up again. Mm. For the past year, I willingly went to sleep. I call it my self-loathing experience, <laughs> but I knew I was willingly putting myself to sleep because I wasn't ready to deal with the kind of things that were going on in the world. And I know this, you know, it's one thing to not be aware of it, but when you are aware of it, you're going through it willingly and you're just trusting that you're gonna go through the experience, you're not gonna fight it, you're just going through it. So when you came back and came back to visit and you're like, let's get out on that labyrinth, let's go to that animal medicine wheel, let's go to the shaman cave. There was a reawakening of what I am here to do. And when you sat in that car with me and you tapped in here, when I was already feeling something here and you were like, here, it's here. It woke me up for me to be ready and right on time for Bodhi, the dog that was made his transition this morning. So we are all one. And then in the Lakota language, there's a saying, Mitakuye mm -hmm. Oye Asin. Hold on one second. Mm -hmm. I want to hear that. Hold mm -hmm. on. I will share with you because I've heard it and I've said it many times before. There's a saying in the Lakota, Mitakuye Oye Asin, which means we are all one. And so when you came here to Sedona and we did our healing process together, is a reactivation and reminder that mitakuye oyeasin that we are all one, <laughs> and you helped me show up right on time for my bodhi. Mm -hmm. And tell the audience about the bodhi. Tell and explain to them actually what one of your calling is, mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to animals, talk oh, about that, and then bring in bodhi and how that happened. I am remembering that my mission and purpose on this planet is to come here to heal animals, especially animals that are making their transition from this realm into the other realm. Oh, yeah, I know you hear us. I know. All right. Come on in. <laughs> Spirit works in wind. Spirit works in wind. Yeah. <laughs> and I am reminded that my purpose is to meet and work and heal with animals who are leaving this physical realm and leaving into the ethereal realm. So as we all know that our bodies are temporary and energy is never is nor neither created nor destroyed. So it's infinite, it's boundless, it's, it's beautiful. So the past year I've been asleep pretty much with awareness of being asleep. You know, no guilt, no regrets is what it was, it was the process. Again, with you coming into Sedona, going to Shaman Cave, going to Labyrinth, the animal medicine wheel being reactivated, realigned, I was summoned to be able to see and visit a dog named Bodhi who has osteosarcoma. And I went to his house yesterday with the owners and we held hands and we said, look, please do not pay attention to the bodies that we're in because we are all one here. This energy that we're doing right now for Bodhi beautiful healing session, very powerful, very deep. And they texted me and told me that he did sleep really well that night to the Reiki energy. He and that was last night that was he last slept? last night he slept well, he was at peace. And then this morning they texted me and told me that he actually made his transition this morning. And I said, well, you know what? Today we celebrate his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so what a 
beautiful way to have that information come in and then have all this wonderful food and celebration for birthday and some good wine. So, you know, it's all about remembering what you're here to do. And it's beautiful to connect with other people to remind you, remind you of what we're here to do. And it's just, I thank you for that. I really do. And it's good, delicious food. Mm. <laughs> I'm telling you, when when she speaks of this, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. individuals mm -hmm. in the urban cities, she's actually from Brooklyn, New York, and you come from the city, you got to come and, and get with her and connect with her, and she will take you on hikes <laughs> and mountains and shaman caves, and it's just amazing, and it's beautiful, and horseback riding, mm -hmm. and just driving, and uh, it, it's just really wonderful. But what's really wonderful is her, is her spirit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, I, I truly believe that, um, you know, who, who wouldn't want someone mm -hmm. um, to have only goodness in their heart, to come, mm -hmm. as much as people love their animals, to come in and yeah. say, all is well, all is well. And yeah. we're going to make sure that Bodhi... Um, has a peaceful transition. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're all dealing with that, right, yeah. with the pandemic and things yeah. along those lines. So she really is very, very special. And I knew if I ever came here um, that I was never going to come here without contacting her and seeing her. She's very, very mm -hmm. special. I know she's some great things. So um, it is a it is a wonderful place to see, and um, and it is also <laughs> let me, and she enjoys <laughs> everything. Excuse me, she enjoys everything. You will not miss. <laughs> He will not miss anything. God bless so much. Oh, oh that was that's so awesome. good. Oh, that's so wonderful. Oh, thank you, Janice. My pleasure. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure.